Now in the beginning, the God Most High gave to Yahweh an inheritance, the tribe of Jacob, who became Israel. Now Yahweh was accepted by the Israelites as their national God. The Israelites took him on because Moses introduced him as the God of their fathers. Moses also had a plan involving Yahweh to invade Canaan and take the land, knowing it would possibly be by violence and the sword. Okay, the Sashu wandering nomads in the southern Levant had used Yahweh in the same way before Moses did. Moses learned of Yahweh from the Sashu. The Sashu tribes included the Midianites. We also learn from Egyptian records that the Sashu's meaning God's dwelling place is attributed to several sites scattered throughout the wilderness of southern Canaan. Biblical evidence of this can be found in the book of Exodus, where a key role is played by Jethro, Moses' father-in-law who lives near the mountain of God and is a Midianite. It is Jethro who indirectly leads Moses to his first meeting with Yahweh at the burning bush. And it was he who inaugurates the tent of the meeting with a sacrifice and proclaims that Yahweh is greater than all the other gods for having freed the Hebrew slaves from Egypt. Now Jezreel expresses to his proud joy that the God he and his people already worshiped, Yahweh, has proved himself mightier than all other gods. And thus, rather than Jethro's conversion to Yahwehism, the passage actually shows the first incorporation of the Israelite leaders into the worship of Yahweh. El was the head god of the Canaanite pantheon, just like Zeus was in the ancient Greek pantheon. El was the father and high god to all the national gods. There is evidence that El and Yahweh were worshipped in Canaan at the same time, just like El and Baal. Yahweh's status increased as the Israelites became more powerful in the Levant area. Eventually, for the Israelites, at least Yahweh absorbed some of the qualities of El, and the Jews agreed their God was the only one. This process is called secretism and has been observed by anthropologists and historians with all other religions as well. Yahweh actually means, I will be what I will be. When the Jews were dispersed from the Levant by the Romans, non-Jews continued to live there as they had before the Jews arrived. They continued to worship El, Asherah, and Baal. I believe Jesus Christ's purpose was to reform the Jewish religion, reorient it from Yahweh, the war god to El, the god of creation, compassion, kindness, and love. The god Jesus spoke of was loving and benevolent, quite unlike Yahweh. El is the true father. Yahweh is a god of war, and that is what Jesus knew and why the Jews crucified him. And anyway, neither did the Israelites or the Jews invent monotheism as they claim. The Egyptian pharaoh, Akhenaten, did that just before Moses supposedly left Egypt. Imagine that. What did he leave with? And was Moses actually Akhenaten? <laughs> There's a lot of questions with him. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh.